I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to try a pretty old school sampling technique, which is to take a loop and basically chop it up, find the constituent hits that exist within it, resample them, and turn them into a kit of our own. Now, fortunately, logic allows us to automate many of these processes so it becomes incredibly slick, and we're going to see how that works here. What I've done is to select a beat loop, and I've picked this not because I like the rhythm, but because I like the component sounds of the loop. Okay, so what I've got here is some individual hits which are just kick drums. I've got a couple of claps at the end. I've got some isolated um, hi-hats as well and some snares. And what I want to do is to take the various bits of this loop and have access to them so that I can actually play a rhythm of my own using these sounds. Now, the first thing I'm going to do in order for that to be the case is I'm going to select this region here. And what I'm then going to do is to come to the functions menu. And there's this incredibly useful command here called remove silence from audio region. And what this does effectively is almost gate the audio. You can see straight away from the pop-up window that appears that what's happened is that logic is allowing me to go through, or at least is asking me to select some parameters to chop this loop up to remove silence. Now, probably this loop never becomes completely silent. So what it means by silence is I get to select a volume threshold, which I'm calling silence. I'm basically saying, okay, when the volume drops below this point, logic, I want you to see that as being silent and therefore to create a chop around those individual hits. And of course I can manipulate those. So as I change the volume, you can see that more of the regions are omitted because they're no longer loud enough to sort of breach that threshold. So the closest, uh, the closer I come to a threshold of zero dB, uh, the more I'm losing those regions. And when I start to back this number down, then of course I get some of it back. So what I'm looking to do is to basically to find a, a sort of value which brings the majority of these regions into play, but as separate individual slices. So I'm going to settle for something around here, maybe minus 22 dB or so. What I can then do is to create a couple of other changes as well. So firstly, what I'm going to do is to create what's called a pre-attack time. Now, think about this for a moment. We're going to go through and slice this region up. And so what I want to do is to make sure that I'm not absolutely chopping the very beginning of the transient from each slice. So what I have a chance to do here is just to breathe a little bit of life into these by creating what's called a pre-attack time, a little bit of silence between or before each individual region so that, again, we're not just coming in really hard on the very beginning of a transient. They won't need to be very long. I'm going to set a pre-attack time of 0.004 seconds. And similarly, at the end, I can also shape how long I want the kind of release of each of these slices to be as well. So again, what I can do is to manipulate the ends so that, again, I'm using the decay tail, but I need to be careful. You can see in this second slice here, if I set too long a region, I'm going to start to get the kind of upslope of whatever happens after that region. So again, what I'm going to do is to manipulate these. Now, what I'm going to do with these slices is, is effectively resample them. I'm going to create a series of individual samples from each one. So I can later on go through and make individual edits to particular slices anyway. So I don't need to be too careful, but obviously the more work I do now, the less I'll have to do later. So having selected my regions, what I'm going to do is to press OK. And what Logic will do is then cut the regions up exactly as we hoped it would. Now then, how am I going to resample them? Well, I want these sounds to be available in Drum Machine Designer. So the next thing I'm going to do is to set up a new Drum Machine Designer instrument. I can do that by pressing the new tracks button. It's a software instrument that I want. But one thing to note about Logic is that if I come and try and find Drum Machine Designer here within this list, I'm not actually going to find it. So what I'm going to do to start with is to create an empty channel strip and then I'm in a position to add Drum Machine Designer to that channel strip because it's here under the other instruments. So there we go, I've got a new Drum Machine Designer. Now, whenever you set up a Drum Machine Designer instrument from scratch, Logic will assume that you want to populate the pads from the library. So the library is opened and it wants me to go looking in here to find the sounds that I want to use. I'm not interested in that, I'm gonna close that down. And instead what I'm going to do is to select all of these regions and I'm going to simply move them down onto this first available pad. And when I let go, Logic is going to go through and resample each of those individual slices, and it's going to assign them to an individual key. So the first one is now going to be here on C1.
And there are the two claps at the end, which are right there at the end of our groove. Now, it turns out that that's created 19 separate regions. So that's going to be spread over two separate pages. And of course, to start with, they're named after the regions themselves. I'm not too worried about that for now. Let's take this first example, the kick here. Now, what I can hear is that I've got this lovely thumpy kick at the bottom, but I've also got this kind of slight legacy, this sort of reverb, almost like a sort of hi-hat that's glued into it as well. And what I want to do is to just make this sample a little bit shorter, which I can do simply by moving its endpoint back. And then what I can do is to apply this real-time fade out on the end. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm just changing the end of the behavior of that sample to tidy it up a bit. And now it's a kick. So I'm obviously now in a position to mute the original audio file if I want to. I can find a couple of sounds. I'm then in a position to create a beat loop of my own. So there's a very straight sort of eighths pattern there if I want to just go through and start building a new pattern around the sounds that I've got available. So what I could then do obviously is quantize this, I can fix velocities, and of course I can go pad by pad and create any little sampling offset changes that I need to in order to basically create exactly the sound I want for each of these pads. But straight away by using remove silence, and then simply resampling into Drum Machine Designer, what we're in a position to do here is to very quickly take the constituent elements of a loop and turn them into a brand new drum kit.